of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart, and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. your confession, I by virtue of my office as a servant of the word announce the grace of God unto all of you. In this stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We speak the entry. I will speak of your testimonies before kings, O Lord. And shall not I will sing of the steadfast love of the Lord forever. With my mouth I will make known your faithfulness to all generations. Let the heavens praise your wonders, O Lord. Your faithfulness in the assembly of the Holy Ones. Blessed are the people who know the festal shout. Who walk the Lord in the light of your face. Who exalt in your name all the day. I will speak of your testimonies before kings, O Lord.
O gracious God, your servant and apostle James was the first among the twelve to suffer martyrdom for the name of Jesus Christ. Pour out upon the leaders of your church that spirit of self-denying service, that they may forsake all false and passing allurements and follow Christ alone, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading appointed for this, the Feast of St. James, the Elder Apostle, is written in Acts chapters 11 and 12. Now, in these days, prophets came down from Jerusalem to Antioch, and one of them named Agabus stood up and foretold by the Spirit that there would be a great famine over all the world. This took place in the days of Claudius. So the disciples determined, everyone according to his ability, to send relief to the brothers living in Judea, and they did so, sending it to the elders by the hand of Barnabas and Saul. About that time, Herod the king laid violent hands on some who belonged to the church. He killed James, the brother of John, with the sword, and when he saw that it pleased the Jews, he proceeded to arrest Peter also. This was during the days of unleavened bread. And when he had seized him, he put him in prison, delivering him over to four squads of soldiers to guard him, intending, after the Passover, to bring him out to the people. So Peter was kept in prison. But earnest prayer for him was made to God by the church. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle, the epistle is written in Romans chapter 8. We know that for those who love God, all things work together for good, for those who are called according to his purpose. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, in order that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. And those whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also, with him, graciously give us all things? Who shall bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? Christ Jesus is the one who died more than that who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who is indeed interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ. Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or danger, or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are being killed all the day long. We are regarded as sheep slaughter. No. In all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death 
nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. And he said to them, What do you want me to do for you? And they said to him, Grant us to sit one at your right hand and one at your left in your glory. Jesus said to them, You do not know what you are asking. Are you able to to drink the cup that I drink, or to be baptized with the baptism with which I am baptized. And they said to him, We are able. And Jesus said to them, The cup that I drink, you will drink. And with the baptism with which I am baptized, you will be baptized. But to sit at my right hand, or at my left, is not mine to grant, but it is for those for whom it has been prepared. And when the ten heard it, they began to be indignant at James and John. And Jesus called them to him and said to them, You know that those who are considered rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them. And their great ones exercise authority over them. But it shall not be so among you. But whoever would be great among you must be your servant. And whoever would be first must among you be slave of all. For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. This is the Gospel of the Lord.
peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text is written both in Acts and Mark 10. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus. In this sermon, we will hear about the persecution of the early church, about the dueling disciples who like to compete against one another, and about a 500-mile walk in Spain, all contemplating St. James, the Apostle. But first, we're going to talk about prayer. There are good prayers, and there are bad prayers. James and John had a bad prayer. They said, Jesus, we want for you to do for us whatever we ask. Now, sometimes that can be a good prayer in the right context, in faith, according to the Lord's word. But, <laughs> then what follows is not a good petition. So Jesus is not going to buy into this. He's not signing a blank check like Herod, who told his daughter-in-law, I'll do whatever you ask. And then his daughter-in-law asked for John the Baptist's head on a platter. Jesus is not getting himself into that. So he asks, what do you want me to do for you? And they say, we would like for... One of us to sit at your right hand and one of us to sit at your left in your glory. And after hearing this, or maybe right by hearing this, the other ten disciples become indignant. That is, they're not just frustrated. They are upset. They are angered. They perceive these two brothers are trying to get ahead of them, leapfrogging over them. And they're already in the inner pack. You've heard of the three, Peter, James, and John. They already make two-thirds up of the foremost disciples, and now they're ganging up and making an alliance to get ahead of everyone, to be there. Well, maybe not Jesus, maybe not like God, but right next up to him, in glory forever, to get the most press and praise of all the disciples. Now, this temptation to get ahead of others, we, we see it all the time, don't we? We see it. You're driving on the interstate and you see construction up ahead, merge right. And you've got that guy zooming by in the left-hand lane, <laughs> trying to cut in line. We see it all the time. Neffingham, when understaffed workers are trying to fill 10 orders at a time, because everybody still wants to eat, but few want to work. We see it all the time. Whether it's the lips of children who say, I want to be first, I want to go first. Or older siblings and even parents try to have more impressive stuff than their neighbors, more trophies, more accomplishments. It leads us to be indignant, not just frustrated, upset and angered at one another for them trying to be ahead of us and then us trying to be ahead of them. James, who is called the elder, to distinguish him from another disciple, James, son of Alphaeus, and he's not the James who wrote the epistle, who is likely the brother of Jesus. James, the brother of John, son of Zebedee, is struggling with this uh, worldly, heavenly glory, like NBA stars, who 
who all of a sudden make it to the NBA, and what do they do with all this press? MLBers brought up to the majors. Now, how are they going to handle the spotlight? And it's in all of us. This temptation to want to be ahead of others. It's in your, your hearts. Earlier, when a Samaritan village rejects Jesus, we don't know the reason why, but they do not welcome him, for his face was set toward Jerusalem. That's all we know. So they don't take Jesus in. They don't hospitalize him, you know? They don't take him in. And so James and John, hey, they've got another prayer. And guess what? It's another bad one. Hey, Jesus, since these guys don't want to house us for the night, what do you say? We ask God to rain fire down on them from heaven. <laughs> Like Elijah 2.0. On Mount Carmel, the prophets of Baal, he got fire to come down from heaven, and then he took a sword to 450 prophets. But Jesus is not here to bring the wrath of God upon his enemies, but to bring the wrath of God rightfully for his enemies upon himself. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Christ did not come to kill, but to give life that you would have it abundantly. The son of man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. This is what Jesus is talking about when he says, Are you able to drink the cup that I drink, or to be baptized with the baptism with which I am baptized? Now, you recognize those words, don't you? You've seen a cup before in church. You've seen a baptism before in church. But what does Jesus mean? He's not talking about these things when he says that. When he talks about the cup, it's as when he prayed a good prayer in the Garden of Gethsemane, when he asked his father, Father, May this cup pass from me, but not what I will, but thy will be done. That cup was the cup of God's wrath upon all the sin of the world, like fire from heaven to consume all sin, all trespasses, all of our indignation. Upon the indignation of God on his Son. And the baptism with which Jesus is to be baptized is not his baptism in the Jordan River with water. That already happened. That was to anoint him as the Christ, the Savior. This baptism will be a baptism in blood. By the thorns of his brow, by the flogging on his back, and by the nails in his hands and in his feet, Jesus is covered in a bloody baptism of death. But we have something else. We do not have that cup of God's wrath to drink that baptism on the cross. No, you, Christian, having seen and heard that Christ is risen even through the message of the apostle James, our cup and our baptism are the sacraments. For Christ has ransomed us, bought us out of sin and death. 
your Lord's cup is given to you now in his blood of mercy and the forgiveness of sins. The baptism with which you are baptized with is the mercy of God, the grace of God. No one here has earned. No one here should have. And it is given to you all through the merit of your Lord Jesus Christ alone. And James, he heard this, and then he saw the Lord do it. And then he saw the Lord risen from the dead. James, man, he should be esteemed. He saw a lot of things you and I would love to see. He saw Christ ascend into heaven and even heard him say to him, one of the apostles, you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. James was there on Pentecost receiving the Holy Spirit, speaking in other languages, baptizing thousands who believed in Jesus, their Savior, that day. James was there when Peter and John were imprisoned and then were released and then flogged and thought it glory and joy to be counted worthy of persecution in the name of Jesus. James was there appointing seven deacons to take care of widows and orphans and the poor so that the gospel would not stop being preached. James was there when Stephen was the first martyr, being stoned at the feet of Saul. And then Herod Agrippa, who was the grandson of Herod the Great, Herod the Great, who slaughtered the Bethlehem babies when Jesus was born. His grandson now imprisoned and persecuted the disciples around Jerusalem. And in Acts 12, he killed James with the sword, pleasing the non-believing Jews and subsequently arresting Peter, trying to add on to it trying to get better, trying to be seen in the eyes of the world as the best king, I'll put down the Christians for you. This fulfilled the words of our Lord. And James, by the sword, drank the cup and was baptized in his own death and martyrdom. He served as a pastor preaching the gospel and pastor administering the sacraments for the forgiveness of sins of those Christians in the first century. He died, just as Jesus said he would. Now there is a legend, and we don't know if it's true, that between the stoning of Stephen and between the sword of Herod, James made it all the way to Spain. And the best evidence we have for this is that James's body is buried in Spain. Afterward, they built a church upon his burial site, Santiago de Compostela, in remembrance that the gospel was brought there likely through the apostle James, brother of John. Just as Jesus said, you'll not be my witnesses, my martyrs in Jerusalem, where James was killed, and to the ends of the earth, Spain, the furthest western country in Europe. At that time. But, having history play out, we know there's a new world, a further western world, America, where we have our own San Diego, which just means St. James. And that gospel has spread to towns and people and places all over, whether it's Bourbon A, Illinois, or Altamont. 
that gospel has been spread to you, to Altima, where there are still people that you see in your life all the time still playing how to get ahead game. They are barking at restaurant workers, they are cutting you off of traffic, and they're all too ready to show you their trophies and their accomplishments. But the Gentiles lord it over them. But it shall not be so among you. For you have been baptized into Christ. You do not live for yourself. You have died to sin, and you are risen in Christ. You have a new life, as James learned to serve others. You, Christian, look at your neighbors as people God gives you to serve. You, Christian, look at others not with a prayer of a son of thunder that God would consume them in wrath, but you wave others ahead and you feed and you work and you put down your accomplishments. And you even take part in the collection that the gospel would go forth and the poor would be fed. You are equipped with good prayers. The Lord's Prayer, which we will speak in a few moments. Your own prayers for those who are sick and hurting. And for the prayers of those who have sinned against you that want to get ahead of you. You pray for that day when no matter where you're buried or who comes to see you or what they call you, there, in Jesus' glory, at your left and at your right, are those you have been indignant with. But that indignation is removed. And you stand in the resurrection and then you bow along with St. James to the only true God, our Savior, Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You stand and sing.
let us pray for the people of God in Christ Jesus and all people according to their needs. Lord Jesus, you had a baptism to be baptized with on the cross. In your holy precious blood, and innocent suffering and death. Grant us who are baptized through water and word to die to the sin of indignation and live to God gladly and daily serving those who you call us to. Lord, in your mercy, Lord Jesus, your church took up a collection for the impoverished and persecuted church in Judea. Teach us to give back first fruits, the portion that we faithfully give back to you. That your word would continually be sown for a bountiful harvest of souls. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of heaven and earth. You send rain and Son, on the righteous and unrighteous. Grant us continued blessings that you know that we need, and bless us in our daily work and service to delight in our daily bread that you give us. Lord, in your mercy. Lord Jesus, you drank the cup of suffering, woe, and bitterness in your own pain and forsakenness on the cross. You bless the suffering of St. James, who died in your name. So we ask you to bless the crosses of those who suffer today. Carl Becker, Hallie Binney, Tina Binney, Sherry Binky, Tiffany Dunaway, Bernice Gromans, Zoe Haler, Tim Mueller, Luella Rubin, Susie Rush, Irene Spilker, Karen Stimke, Steve Velker, Cleet Wessendorf, Jean Wharton, Craig Wolf, Lily Wright, Kathy Meyer, wife of Pastor Meyer, St. Peter is recovering at home. That they would know all things work together and nothing will separate them from your love. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, you watch and care for us even through imperfect authorities who try to lord it over us. You've granted us a fundamental law in our land and in our hearts to serve our neighbor, rooted in that which is good and true. Protect our leaders, armed forces, police, and all who serve us for our safety and earthly peace. Lord, in your mercy. Lord Jesus, you serve us today in the giving of your sacraments of holy baptism and communion for the forgiveness of our sins. Bless our faith to receive this very gospel in our eating and drinking and look forward to the day of the eternal marriage feast with the Lamb in his kingdom, with all apostles and saints. So make us glad for the marriages of Lonnie and Sally Wilson, Dean and Carrie Emanuel, that in this feast today, we may look forward in hope to the eternal feast of everlasting life. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom you care. Trusting in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We continue with the service of the sacrament. Give thanks. 
thanks unto the Lord our God. It is true to be right and salutary, we should at all times and places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, for you have mightily governed and protected your holy church in which the blessed apostles and evangelists proclaim your divine and saving gospel. Therefore, with patriarchs and prophets, apostles and evangelists, with your servant James and all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil.
Jesus Christ strengthen you and preserve you in body and soul to life and everlasting. Almighty God, that you've refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you of your mercy, you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever.
In the narthex is you leave two things you can grab, an August calendar to your left, and then also some of the uh, treasurer's reports and other reports for our voters meeting at 1.30. I told uh, the ladies a couple days ago, I said, uh, look over the parish hall rules and the reports and then push your husbands out the door and tell them what to say at the voters meeting, okay? So <laughs> just encouraging uh, uh, our, our male to um, continue to fulfill their vocation, their duty uh, within the voting membership of our congregation, listening to all membership in consideration of their duty. All right, are there other announcements? Please. We still need uh, people to sort of our duties. They're sick and full for uh, We need uh, bags. We're having the Cornhole tournament. Bags. If it's two people per team. Uh, we need lots of participation in that. And volleyball team. It's all coming together real nice. I'm kind of excited about it. I think it's really going to do well. Sponsorship is awesome. So. For our September 11th uh, barbecue fundraiser for ALIS, please consider uh, signing up in one of the ways Matt asked. Any other announcements? Let's stand for the recession. <laughs> 